Hi guys and welcome to a wrap up video. This one is going to be for the Tropical Readathon. I did not complete every prompt, which is perfectly fine. I read quite a bit, even though most of the books were like graphic novels and uh, movie scrapbooks, but they still count. It's still reading. So um, let's go ahead and tell you what the prompts were and what book I fulfilled for which prompt, which prompts I didn't fulfill. So for those of you who are new, hi, my name is Christine and I love to read and I am autistic. So let's just go ahead and dive right on in. Now to keep this video fairly short, I won't go into big synopsises for these wrap-ups. Wrap if you want to know more about individual books, um, just keep an eye out on my channel. I do individual book reviews and I um, do non-spoilers unless it's the next book in a series whether it's the second third etc then it'll more than likely contain spoilers for the previous books in the series so that's the only way it's going to be spoilers or like in the case that I'm doing a buddy read um, with a friend named Amy from A Star um, we'll go into depth as we're reading the Chronicles of Narnia and we're doing live shows for that so that's the also kind of type of a spoiler but my individual book, re book reviews, I try to do non-spoilers and just kind of let you know what some trigger warnings are, my overall thoughts, things like that. So just there you go. <laughs> I, try, I don't like to spoil books, um, especially because I know when I'm listening to someone do reviews, a lot of the time they're spoilers. And sometimes they'll do spoiler freeze and then they'll do spoiler filled. I just don't even worry about that. I don't want to film two videos, so it's just all spoiler free. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into this. So this is the wrap-up for the Tropical Readathon. I did a couple of readathons this month, so I'm going to do a couple of reviews. Yes, I'm in my pajamas, but you know what? It's Sunday and it's a lazy day. I have nowhere to go. I'm going to stay as comfy as possible. So, especially since I had that spinal cord simulator removed from my back on Friday. I'm still just a little tender, so I'm trying to be as comfy as possible. But it did good, so now I'm just waiting for the official okay go ahead from the insurance. Okay. So <clears throat> prompt number one is absent or dead parents. Um, and, or the alt and each prompt has an alternate prompt. So you have absent dead parent tropes, or you can read a book for, with more than one author. For that one, I did a book with more than one author, and I read The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Um, what I found interesting about this one is the, po the point of view, you have dual perspectives. One POV is from, um, is it Marissa? Yeah, Marissa, and that's told in third person. The other one is told from the therapist, which is Avery, and that's told in first person. I have never had a book have dual POVs like that, and that was really interesting. Um, and that just made it that much more enjoyable. I loved the writing. I look forward to picking up more work from this author. Gave it four stars. It was not flowery. flowery. Um, it was blunt to the point. It felt like it read fast because the chapters were fairly short, but I really enjoyed this. Um, so Marissa seeking help to salvage her marriage and Avery is the counselor they, her, Marissa and her husband go to. So four stars, loved it. Okay. Let's see. The next prompt is love triangle or that's the next trope, or you can do followers slash friends choose between two books. Um, I just kind of asked a couple of people and it came to be, and not like virtual, uh, just real life. Um, anyway, came out to be Phoebe and her unicorn. This is the sixth book in the Phoebe and her unicorn series. And this is the magic storm. This is a graphic novel. Very cute. Um, I think this gal is third or fourth grade. I can never remember. And then I kind of figure it out as I read the books, but it's just an adventure that she goes on. Um, and this particular one, it's the storm. And because the unicorn can't access her magic as usual, she, they say it's a magic storm. So it's interfering not only with the general power of the area, but also with the power of the magic. So hence the magic storm. This was cute. Um, I gave this four stars. Okay, prompt number three is for the trope, the new kid, or the alternate pr alternate prompt is a genre you don't usually read. So for this one, I'm going to have to insert a picture. This one was a library book, and it is that I went with, and that is The Unkindness of Ravens by M.E. Hillard. And this is the first in a cozy mystery series. What I liked about this, it had the gothic feels, 
and the whole thing took place in a library setting, or most of it. I would say 90 to 95% took place in the library. Uh, the body is found, the investigation takes place in the library, you have people undercover in the library. It's, anyway, it was cool. I liked it. So four stars. Standard cozy mystery. Okay, prompt number four, the trope is dark academia, or you could go with a borrowed book. This one I also went with a library book. Um, and that one is Weird Opedia by Alex Palmer. I gave this one three stars. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but The Unkindness of Ravens, I gave four stars. So Weird Opedia, I gave three stars. It was fine. There were interesting things. When researching f books on this, I think there are some updated versions of this um, because the version I read was published like 10 years ago. So like in 2021 or 2022. So there were some stats and stuff that were out of date, but overall it was interesting. Gave it three stars. It probably would have been more had it been more current, um, but that's just what my library had available. So, and I just happened to stumble across that when browsing. So anyway, just fun facts and we're from household stuff to animals, to sex, to food. So, you know, just a bunch of stuff and weather. And anyway, just a bunch of just fun little facts. Okay, prompt number five, the trope is holiday. The alternate prompt is takes place in another country. For this one, I went with Diagon Alley because I live in the United States. This definitely does not take place in the United States. So this is just a movie scrapbook um, all about Diagon Alley and Harry Potter. Um, there were stickers in this I took out um, because of course I love stickers and I'm gonna use them. You have the introduction to Diagon Alley. There are little inserts that are taped in, like this is the letter to go to Hogwarts, what they're going to be needing. Um, there's a little envelope here. What is in this envelope? I can't remember. Oh, this envelope is all about Gringotts, and so you have cardboard cutouts of what the wizarding money looked like in Harry Potter. So that was fun. I gave it four stars because these movie scrapbooks are just entertaining. They're real fun. Um, okay. Prompt to number six is the trope is blast from the past. The alternate prompt is to read a book published before 2000. This one I'm going with was published in 1998 and that is another graphic novel. This one can't foxtrot. It's just a collection of comics that used to be in the Sunday funnies when I would read them in the 90s. Um, and so it's just a fun, very nostalgic. You have the mom, Andy, the dad is Roger. The eldest child is Peter, the, the middle child is a girl named Paige, and then the youngest is a 10-year-old named Jason. And they don't ever age up. They're always the same age. Um, but a good portion of this takes place at a science camp that Jason goes to with his best friend Marcus, and they become friends with Eileen, and I can't remember the other gal's name. But this was fun. Um, that I gave five stars. Very nostalgic. Um, I also liked the... Um, it's considered, um, it would be considered dated as far as any technology that appears in it, which I don't mind. It's very, it's just a nostalgic read. I just loved it. That was always my favorite comic to read. I think Garfield would have been my second favorite, but anyway, moving on. Okay, number seven is the mixed media trope. The alternate book is to read an auto, the alternate prompt is to read an audiobook or an ebook. I went with ebook. And for this one is My Kind of Forever by Tracy Brogan. And I gave this one four stars. This is part of the Trillumbay series, um, which is a trilogy that takes place on a small island. It is a clean romance. There are innuendos. There are um, some kind of... There's lusting. But there, but you don't... It's very much a fade to black. You They lead up to where like they're starting to make out and then if they are going to have sex it is a it's like you don't see it you just know the next morning they had sex so considered clean romance gave it four stars i enjoyed it okay number eight um apocalyptic or dystopia the alternate prompt is a comfort read now for this one <laughs> i think sometimes graphic novels or mangas can be comforting but this one i did not know it was a comfort read until i read that but that's Creepy Cat. This is a manga. It's a gothic um, paranormal. It has cats. And I loved the artwork. Let me go to... I don't... So there's the first page. Um, and I loved it. And I found this very soothing, very comforting. I loved the art in it. Um, the color palette is very simple. You know, mostly grays, blacks, hints of red. Um, Why? I mean, there are a couple of, like, browns and stuff in there but 
I just love this. So this series, Creepy Cat, I consider a comfort read for me. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I gave this one five stars and I will be collecting this whole series. I actually have the second one um, on a stack that I want to get to at some point. Um, and then once I read that one, I'll be getting the third book. I think there's four out so far. So, and I hope that the author Cotton Valent writes more of these because they are awesome. Okay, number nine, the trope is found family, or you can read a book that is in a series. This one I did, another graphic novel, and this is Adulthood is a Myth. This was a gift from Amy from A Star Reads. I'll put Amy's channel in the description box. Highly recommend checking it out. Um, and this is just a comp, like, comics that deal with adulthood. Like, there's this one I just passed. Um... Oh, like, here's one. It's like, oh, hey, it's October. And then she shows up in a pumpkin outfit with a black cap. Oh, I know it is. Um, there's socially unacceptable. And then it's, talks, it's like having hairy pits on girls and hairy legs, and which it's now more acceptable than it ever used to be. Um, and then socially acceptable was thin, sweaty, pimply, creepy caterpillar mustache on boys. And how it's an unjust world that the boys can have hairy parts, but the girls can't. So kind of pokes fun at that. There's just a lot of stuff, social media, um, and expectation versus reality, you know, like with short hair versus long hair, um, where this is a girl, it's all about like, you know, there's this little joke at girls sinking with their periods, um, and things like that. It was fun. Okay, prompt number 10, the trope is celebrity. The alternate prompt is to read a book that's recommended by a celebrity. I did not get to that one. So there are three more prompts. If I don't count the team, now I didn't submit any of my reading points for the points or anything. I just kind of did this low key because I didn't know how well I would do. So um, the next, so prompt number or trope number 11 is multiple POV. The alternate prompt is multiple POC characters. The book that I read I got from Once Upon a Book Club, so I wanted to go ahead and read this one, and that is The World Girls by V.S. Alexander. This is told in third person, and it has four POVs. It's all about World War II, and most of these, some of it is told from people who join a resistance to try and help um, defeat and bring down Hitler and bring down the Nazis and, the, and the, everyone that's like that, um, and to help alleviate or help rescue the Jews. Um, and other people that are in concentration camps or ghettos or things like that where they're treated horribly, have lack of food and, and water and everything to be able to survive your basic necessities. Um, the thing that made this a little bit more difficult is it was part of some of the POVs are told from, peop from people who are actually Jews and having to go through what they went through. So that was a little bit harder to read. I've read World War II before but never had a book that had the perspective of someone who is Jewish who was going through all that crap with the Jews and living in the ghetto and um, having lack of food and having to struggle and all of that. Never read a book like that. Thoroughly recommend. Highly, highly recommend. Thoroughly loved. So, okay. So that's all I read for the Tropical Readathon. Now let me just tell you briefly, there were two other official overall prompts. Um, one, the trope was for bookish themes or read a book with a pun in the title. Didn't do that. Um, the 13th trope was retelling or um, like a book that has a TV or movie adaptation is my understanding. So the one that I thought, well, if I'm going to do this and if I do were to officially do this, like submit the pages and all of that, I would have picked to be on team mystery horror thriller. Um, and there are two prompts specifically for that team. One is Mysterious Invite, and the other one is a book with the undead. Didn't do either of those, as well as um, the two group books. One was Hollow Fires by Samantha, uh, Samiria Ahmed, and the second one was Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. Didn't get to either of those, but that's fine. I think I did pretty good with 10. Yeah, overall 10. 10 books I read fit the prompts. So that's it. Let me know if you participated in Tropical Readathon and what your favorite book that you read for the month was. So that's it. Until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.